Welcome to Hearthstone Winery. They are the host of the MCC's Walk the Vine event on August 25th, and I'm here with some of the key players at Hearthstone to ask them a little bit about the wine and uh, the unique aspects of the winery. So can you take it from here and tell us a little bit more? Yeah, well, I'm Jocelyn, um, and so Hearthstone has some really unique features about it. First is that we're small, we're a real boutique style winery. Uh, more importantly, we are 100% estate grown. That's very hard to find now in Paso Robles. So everything that you see here today was grown on our estate vineyard. That's great. So what wines do we have here in front of us today? Well, we typically start out with our white wine, the Pearl. That's going to be a Viognier Roussan blend. Um, currently, for the summertime, we produce a Rosé, which is very nice also. And then from there, we can move into our red wines. Yeah, well, you know, the really interesting thing about Paso Robles is the amount of microclimates that we see here in Paso Robles. Um, what can be grown in one location can't necessarily be grown in another one. So saying that we have an identity really for Zinfandel might not be necessarily true because you can find a fabulous Zen you can find these incredible Rhone wines that are doing very well right now. But there are some really spectacular Pinot Noirs that are being produced. Some of these Italian varietals like Barbera, Sangiovese, um, some of these producers are coming out with spectacular bottles of wine. So rather than say we can be focused on one thing, and this is what really makes Paso Robles special, we can do such a variety of things. And yeah, definitely, Paul, definitely a lot of different varietals. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul might have something to add to that also. Yeah, because you guys actually have a, a New wor World Super Tuscan mm -hmm. blend. Yes, we do. So tell me what that is exactly. Well, uh, uh, actually, I look at a Super Tuscan wine as being from Italy, um, Sangiovese based with Cab, Cab Franc, or Merlot. All three, one or two of the others. And that's... That's a super Tuscan wine. Uh, we, I call it a New World Super Tuscan, or they have come out with it now, is because they, um, I add some raw to it. Mm. So that, and that's that, not typically found in the right, world. Right, exactly. Stuff. That's, yeah, so, we, and I, I think a lot of other wineries, even over, over in Europe, are starting to add some raw to their, to their wines. So the New World really is influenced the, in the old mm -hmm. winemaking techniques. Wow. Um, I have just had a sip of that cab, and I think it's a perfect segue into talking about tannins. A lot of people, you know, you hear tannins band banded about in wine talk, but some novices don't really know what that is. Mm -hmm. Do you, what would you say to a novice that they need to know about tannins? Well, to start, um, the big difference that most people don't realize is that tannins help a wine age. But there are tannins and then there's acidity. So you can just taste a wine and you think of acidity more like that puckering sensation that you get from a lemon, where tannins, I think of more like oversteeped tea. You might actually, if you rub, the rub your tongue on the back of your teeth, get some grit in there, some mm -hmm. particles almost, and it's gonna be just like that oversteeped tea sensation. So just from a tasting standpoint, um, that's the best way to tell from there. And then uh, in terms of aging a wine. Yeah, tannins will let a wine age much longer. You know, uh, some are subtle tannins, some can be kind of harsh tannins. Um, you know, I think our tannins on our wines are kind of medium. I would not say they're really, except for maybe the Cabernet has some. But there's different tannins, like silky tannins. There's just a, a broad range, and sometimes you can almost feel like you get a sweetness off the off from the oak, especially in new barrels, new oak barrels. And what's and going on with this cab in particular, with its tannins? Because it, you told me earlier that it would age really well. Mm -hmm. So is that that's part of the the tannin structure yes, with that yes, cab? Yes, yes, yes. And tannins are derived from uh, stems, seeds, and oak. Okay. So yes, so that's. Yeah, and, and of course, over time, ant tannins will subside. So yes. if you're drinking a wine now and it's really tannic, 
10 years from now, that's not necessarily going to be the case. Oh, wow. Yeah, even so they will soften over time. Okay. Not only do, do your wines have good tannin structures, you guys also take great care with your grapes. Um, they're hand-picked, uh, and then they're hand-sorted. So how, what goes into deciding what is the grape that you're going to use with your wines? Uh, well, typically in the vineyard, um, we usually look to our, our winemaker to kind of make the decisions, you know, when we want to pick. Um, we typically look at the bricks and you know what the sugar levels are, um, and then we'll decide to harvest. And some things we harvest sooner, and then some things uh, we'll decide because we do everything by hand. We'll decide to do you know maybe multiple harvests and 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 do half the lot now, and then do half the lot a week from now. So um, once Paul gets it, um, he'll do a sorting, and we 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 sort by hand as well, mm -hmm. just so that way we can make sure that um, the quality of the wine is continually. Um, taken into consideration right because when we hand sort we were looking for sometimes not normally but normal sometimes you may have a little mold you may have raisining especially mm -hmm. in zinfandel and i was explaining this to teresa earlier that when we hand sort if a cluster has half the side roughly has raisins on it it gets thrown out mm -hmm. because what happens is if there's a lot of raisins and i notice this a lot with zinfandel that when you pick it pick Zinfandel for example at 25 bricks if you if you were just to crush it and a lot of raisins went into the must after a couple of days it soaks up mm -hmm. so now your bricks are now 28 or 29 it's very notorious for Zinfandel and and then that's when you start to, to me you start getting a lot of these overripe flavors mm -hmm. because what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it right exactly. so if you throw moldy raisiny fruit in there you know so we try to sort it all out and most of our fruit always looks good but once in a while, you know, Mother Nature dictates sometimes how we're going right. to do things. So, but, but hand sorting <laughs> is really a good way to do things. You would never be able to do it, probably not as much in large, large wineries where 10, 15,000 tons. Mm -hmm. It's just but, too much effort to Oh, yeah, yeah. Fruit. It's very time consuming. It could take an hour just to sort through a ton of fruit. All right, so what is your favorite Hearthstone wine? Uh, I got to go for the season with the Grenache Rosé. Um, it's got some grapefruit. It has some florals. It's just great for the summertime. Uh, you kind of drift towards um, more salad and more light style foods, and I think this is a great one to just kind of stand by it. You know, it doesn't overpower it. just kind of adds and enhances. Mm -hmm. just sitting on a porch on a lovely past afternoon. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Sipping on some uh, Rosé. Yeah. Mm -hmm.